What happened to you? I don't remember. I love you, but people change. I'm not gonna let anything happen to you. You okay? It's just, I haven't been feeling like myself. <sighs> like myself. Significant Other, Rated R. Original movie streaming October 7th on Paramount+. Plus. Hey, y'all know how I'm down with Betty MGM, right? And today, I'm gonna tell you why they're the king of sports books. It all starts with the app. It's high tech all the way. Withdrawals are fast and easy, and they deal with the best parlay offers and boosted odds specials in the business. And because you're KG certified, you'll get a pro football deal when you sign up. Grr! Just use the bonus code KG1000, yes, KG1000, and your first football wager is risk-free up to $1,000. Yes, folks, $1,000. Yeah, you heard me right. Take your game to the next level and find out why. When KG makes a gridiron bet, he lays it down with the only sports book that matters. Download the BetMGM app today and go to the BetMGM.com and enter the bonus code KG1000, yes, KG1000, and bet up to a grand with no risk. Ain't no W like a W with BetMGM, baby! <laughs> Oh, this is dope. Right, we, might get, we might have to get a one-on-one. -on -one. I'm done. This is dope. This is dope. I'm watching the Euro and the three ball change the game on how we look at it. Yeah. We was nowhere Euro in this much. It, I see, did I see Joel Euro in the in the, in the post one time? Yeah, Joel. Did I see that one? Did I see him? Did, yeah. I see, did I see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... Are we in positionless basketball right now? Yeah. yeah like because... there is no one through five no more? It's just like what, five players? I, I, just, I think it's five. My, my, my... Me personally, I think it's just five players. Are you there. serious? Yeah, because everybody got the everybody got the freedom to shoot threes. Everybody got the freedom to dribble the ball up the court. You know. And then you get it off the board, you're going. Yeah, you're going. But well, stop acting like you ain't shoot today. Why not? I didn't you shoot today. I said I can shoot today. Look good. That's my range right here. That shit still look good. Fifteen footer, yeah. That's my range right there. Let's do the only. I see the mid range coming back though. You know what's crazy? At the club. I would have never thought out of all the years that you would become a coach, man. Really? I know you was good at micromanaging on the mm -hmm. flow. Um, a lot of people don't know, man. You were probably one of the better communicators and um, operators, as I like to call you. Like, I've been in some dismal times in the huddle where you never got, you know, gathered the, mm -hmm. gathered and got order into the, into the, um, into the huddle. Yeah. It was like did you did you know you was going into coaching when you was done? Like my ninth year in the NBA, man, I just knew that I was gonna be a, a basketball coach. I huh. thought I, by now I thought I was gonna be a head coach huh. by now. Because I just I just knew how to motivate and get guys collectively as a group um play together to be a be a, be one. Right. You know what I'm saying? So be one. Different. I just had I just had a a feel in myself where I can just gather the troops, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Like we're gonna get through this, but let's just let's stay on the same page and let's right. do what we need to do to be successful as a ball club, man. And early in my career in Houston, um, don't forget it. My first year, um, you know, when I struggled like in the playoffs and, and dreams to always say, listen, we're not gonna call Sam a rookie anymore. Sam had 50 games on his belt. He didn't played in two playoff series. So when Sam makes mistakes, we're not gonna blame him on him because he's a rookie. Mm. Let's stop that. Mm. You know, he's been around long. He knows what he needs to do. He knows what he don't need to do mm. in the game of basketball. So Dream put that out there early on me, and I just thought like, wow. Really? Now, I, now I had a small margin of mistake mm. as a rookie, man. Like, I mean, your first your first year though, man. You you probably had one of the better better years uh, that I've ever seen a rookie have, and the effects of how you affect the game. Um, I'm, you know, I'm a basketball phenom, mm -hmm. so I know I watched everything. Uh, talk about winning early in your career. It was so, listen, and how much it helped you like mature quicker. Winning was like, winning becomes, you know, everybody talk about culture, you know what I'm saying? And how I identify culture is you know, like winning, like the San Antonio Spurs, the yeah. culture, the culture, yeah. I saw yeah. you here, you know, it's just winning. Yeah. You know, you, Win, you know, you don't hear you know, the Spurs is going through a, a, a rebuild situation right now. Mm -hmm. So you don't hear 
too much about their their culture because they're not winning as much, you know. Mm. But when Pop had uh, Parker and Ginobili and Tim, they was going to be in the top, you know, four teams in the NBA every every year. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But um, that's my opinion of culture. When you win, that develops your culture. You need that nucleus of players to be able to develop that certain type of culture. Absolutely, absolutely. I think right. I think the Spurs, you know, it's kind of tough to have, you know, five guys on your team or three main guys on your team that have the same goals. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Back then, you know, because everybody was trying to shine to get their own back then. And I think the Spurs with, you know, Tony Parker from France, Ginobili from Argentina, mm -hmm. Tim from the island. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It, it was a, it was a different mixture of ball players back then and they just you know and i first played against tony parker and i knew i said once this kid get more confidence he's gonna be pretty good he was always he was fast he could shoot a little bit and his shooting was gonna get better because once he got more and more playing time think about tony started his rookie year in the nba mm. Started. He was smarter and better than most people gave him credit i think pop was really overly aggressive with him on purpose because he just needs a, you know, a, a swift kick sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You think you need a, um, you think you need more than three players to create culture? How many players does it take to create a culture? I think three players can create a culture because everybody else will follow. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we had in Minnesota. It was yeah. just me, you, and Spree, and the whole team understood that Sam, Kevin, Spree was gonna shoot majority of the basketballs, and Irvin Johnson, Wally Zerbiak. Uh, who else we had? Trent Hassel, yeah, yeah. Troy Hudson. They was cool with that. Cause we were the best players on the right. team, you know. We was the you know MVP that year. So down stretch, you know, we had one particular play that and it's so funny that the whole arena knew that we was gonna run. <laughs> and it was so it was a simple play. It was a high pick and roll with me and you. So right. it was like I knew for one thing you was gonna set a great pick for me to spring me open because I needed a, I needed a pick to to function. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I wasn't fast enough to just. Do, Beat people out to dribble like that, right. but I was crafty enough to do it. Right. So I knew once you got a piece of my guy, and it was over. You know what I'm saying? He's trailing, so now your man got even let you go for a wide open 15 foot jump shot, which right. you was, you know, you shot that shot at a 60 percent clip. You know what I'm saying? So or they left me open, and I'm going left, and I was gonna make the majority of them shots going left. How many of um, how much of when you were I, I saw some clips of you. Working out James, working out mm -hmm. Embiid, working out uh, Maxi. Shout to Maxi too, man. T Maxi is one of my favorite players, man. I love watching him play, man. I love his his um his change of direction. I love how he, I love his spark. I love his energy. I love when he come in the game. I, I, I fucks with dude like straight up. Um, I love his I love his energy, man. Mm -hmm. I love what he brings to your team, man. Um, when I'm watching you work these guys out, I know you, bro. Mm. I've been around you a long time. Um, I knew when uh, you came to Minnesota, you didn't you didn't have some of the best uh, practice habits. But then, <laughs> <laughs> how much of how much of uh, and then I've actually I'm gonna go ahead and correct it because when he got to Minnesota, he practiced a lot every day. more every day. I practiced and training camp every day, and, and I saw him play hurt, and I saw him play through some crazy shit, and be you know what I'm saying. He created monkey balls, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, when I'm watching you work these guys out, mm -hmm. right? I said all that to say this. How much of of, of you of are you are are you bringing in some of the knowledge? Excuse me. How much of of what you were great at bringing into the workout and giving it to? Because I see Shea Alexander, I seen Chris Paul. I watch all they. They mid-range, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. studying, and I see the S, I see all of it, right? Mm -hmm. How much of your own personal uh, gifts that you had are you giving uh, these young guys on the player development side versus, you know what, this is what you need to work on, or is it a combination? It's a combination. I think, uh, I see a lot of I work on guys trying to teach guys moves and everything, but that's mm -hmm. the move that you want them to do. So I just try to give, I give like, let's use Tyrese Maxey, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to give Max. I want to try to make Maxi a three-level score. You know, he's a he's a four. He shoots a three-point shot at a forty-two percent high clip. High, he That's has a high, high clip. clip. You know, That's for a three-point shooter. Anything you know? over thirty is a high clip. Everything over thirty-six. I think yeah. you're, you're a good thirty-seven. You're a good three-point shooter. That's solid. And um, Maxi is and he's shooting at 40, 42, 40, like 41, 42. 
right now. And um, so he has that part. He's a great finisher mm -hmm. at the basket because his speed is unbelievable. And yeah. he has a knack of making layups in traffic. That's something that I couldn't teach him because I was never a great layup maker in traffic. Like, athletic. I had no athleticism to do that, you know what I'm saying? So all praise to him. And the part we're working on, we want him, I'm trying to get him to understand that with his five seconds on the shot clock, he don't have to horse the 35 foot up. Mm. He has enough ability to get to where he wants to get at with the basketball. And if he gets this part of the game down, the mid-range game down where it don't have to be like Kyrie Irving's, because mm. Kyrie Irving is yeah. a basketball, yeah. but it could, if it could be 70% of what Kyrie Irving has from the mid-range game, uh, he's he's special. He's going to be a special, special ball player. He is. And he's, he's, you know, he's really, really big for our team. You know what I'm saying? Um, Doc puts a lot of pressure on me with him. You know what I'm saying? It's good, Doc though. put pressure on me with Shea. You know, um, our late coach Flip put pressure with me on John Wall, you yeah. know, and Bradley Bill, you know. Yeah. You know, one thing I do have with these guys, I have that be poor with them. But, you know, it's nothing about gaining. I don't need anything from them. Right. It's all knowledge. Right. All knowledge to this day if I call John Wall up. He may not answer the phone, but he eventually going to call me back right. within that day. Within that day, he'll call me back because he knows the rapport we had. And that goes for all the guys I trained. Right. And, and, and when they get max money, man, and I'm the first one they call. I tell them before they even play their second year of basketball, I know it. I see it, mm. what kind of money they're going to get for playing this game of basketball. Um, John Wall, I remember I told Bradley Bill, I said, you can be a max ball player. And he couldn't believe it. Like, it's freaking, yeah, after the, I told you him, it. I saw it. After his first game, he was like, one for like 11. And he had a bad game, you know. He, he his motion guy, you know, as a rookie, you know, his motion got caught up. And after, not for good after the game, he was, he was crying after the game. Word. He was crying. He was hurt because Bradley Bill, you, you got to understand that. He, 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 he wanted to be great. Mm. He won, he won, he wanted to be great. So when he didn't have a, Good games over the night, and um, you know, he got emotional, and I had to go talk to him. And I never forget it. He was sitting downstairs, and um, in a parking lot, and at the Wizards uh, Arena, and I go down there, and you know, he's sitting with his, you know, his mother, you know, his father, his brothers, and um, funny story, and I walk over to him, and I see his mother wiping his tears away. So, you know, he, he's upset because he didn't play well no open doubt. the night. Everybody want to play well open the night. No doubt. And I walked over to him, and I said. Hey, man, you know we got 81 more games to play? <laughs> right. I said, Brad, you know what? You will have a couple more bad games like this, man. Hopefully you don't, but what you need to do is take your family out to dinner and look forward to working tomorrow so this don't happen again. Mm. And once I gave him that direction, um, it was over. Our bond, our friendship as a player, coach, it became real, real good. And mm. he understood it's nothing that... You know, I'm just coming off a 16-year, you know, basketball career. Right. You know, I, you know, I was cool. You know, in every aspect of someone being cool. You know, and he knew it wasn't about me getting something from him. You know, it was that was never uh, 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 even thought in his mind. Right. He knew that I was passionate about this. And I, when I showed him the film, I said, "Listen, Brad. You know, this is the things you have to do for you to become a better basketball player. You." Have have to do this. Now he a max player, yo. He's a max player. He made it, talk know, about all the talk about all the guards you not developed. Chris Paul, bro. Uh, John Chris Wall. Paul, you know, John Wall, all right. Bradley Bill, Shea Alexandra, uh, what's the, uh, Austin Rivers, Rivers Tyrese Maxey. Um, man, I just all these guys went on to did and all been these, in the league and been all these guys gonna be team. like I got Austin Rivers at a time where. His confidence was shaking. Mm. So this is the first time I dealt with a player that his confidence was shaking. What year is this for This him? was like his fourth year. Mm. And it was so crazy that when we we got him from New Orleans mm. and he comes to LA, Doc calls me. His father calls me and said, you go talk to him. Usually when you get traded, the head coach talks to you. Doc had enough confidence in me because he saw my work out there with John and right. said, no, no, you know, when he comes to the office. I won't be there. 
And you go talk to him. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. So I went right to the office and I said, um, I took him in Doc's office. I said, you tried it your way and it haven't worked. Would you agree? That's the first thing about getting a plan to respect you if they agree with you saying. Right. You know, because they may think, no, oh, it worked, but you know. And keeping it a buck with them. And keeping it 100. Right. Keeping it 100. You know, that's, that, that, that's, that's just me. You know what I'm right. saying? You know, yeah. if you don't, I'm, I'm just straightforward. And that, I think sometimes that may hurt me, but you know, it is what it is. I'm going to be straightforward about this game of basketball. Right. I'm not the guru of basketball, yeah. but I've been through enough wars yeah, yeah. than, you know, 80% of these guys in this league. You know what I'm saying? I've been in some wars. I've been up 3-1. And I've uh, been down to be one, mm. you know. Right. It can't make a one championship. I've been on a team that was the lowest seed in NBA history to win the championship, and win with high fashion. We swept the Orlando Magic wow. as the sixth seed. Wow. You know, we beat three 61 teams my second year in the NBA. That's unheard of. Do a lot of the kids you work out and uh, develop? Do they do they know your story? Yeah, your I think they. I think they do. I think they. Are they I think they do because like I had John and um. Shea, they Kentucky guys. I play for Calipari in the pros. You know mm. what I'm saying? So Cal, like, listen, you have you will get no better teacher in the game of basketball than Sam. You know. That's what's up. But I also like to give guys their own thoughts. Sometimes I might work a guy out. Like the other day with Tyrese Max, I said, Max, I know what I want to do with you, but what do you want to? Yeah, work I'm about on? to ask you too. A lot of guys come in with their own vision of yeah, I what they're like, trying to get better at. And I, I like to work out guys and our t how are we going to use the guy. Okay. Team concept, right. like how we like not just coming in here. I doing can't a give. Bunch of moves. I can't like, like Maxi. You have to throw you the ball. I want you to go between the legs, behind the back, spin, back between the legs, spin again. I always asking now, why are you doing all that? What Joel and B is supposed to be doing? What James Harden supposed to be doing? Why are you spending and doing all this? So I try to work guys out how we gonna use them in a basketball game in a team concept. Mm -hmm. I think that's the key to working out guys. So all you. All the Google work out guys in, in America. You got to work out guys how they are being used for their team. A trainer's fucking up the game, Lord. Real shit. No disrespect to all the trainers out here because I want to say that, first off, trainers mean well. Uh, I think they're going at it about the, the right way, you mm -hmm. know, wanting to develop players. Hey, but Like I said, you got you to train guys how they can be used in the basketball game. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, got you. If a guy is a straight pin down a jump shooter, and now you're teaching him how to go between the legs and behind the back. That's not what the coach may need him mm. to do. Less is more. Less is more yeah. all the time. All the time. I learned that from Clyde Drexler, one yeah. of my, like, less is more. Right. Sam, get right to it. Rudy Tom John, just get right to it. Out of all the uh, coaching influences you've had, who's your biggest coaching influence of all time? I played with him shortly, with Doc Rivers, man. Doc, Doc just, that year um, I, come, I came to the team with the Boston man, and yeah, like Rudy T was good with me. Rudy T was a coach, and you played for Rudy in the Olympics. Rudy, he just, he Rudy just, was goddamn too relaxed, though. Yeah, R Rudy was the guy, like, he just. He let you come in, do your job, and then the job over, we all going. It wasn't, that, that's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah. Do your job, like Belichick, do your fucking job. Right. Just do your job, man. Yeah. And he didn't like, you know, guys, you know, he wants you to get your extra work in, but he's like, let's, let's get the work in. As a team, yeah. you know, what Doc whole thing was, when I got with Doc, a former player who understood that he had to coach that championship team we had in Boston kind of hard. Like, kinda. I don't, th I, I don't think that, <laughs> and people think he's hard right now. He's not hard. We've seen with Doc Rivers oh, hard. You know what I'm saying? When we go, you know, twelve games in a row, and you know, we lose a game and. The great thing about Doc during that year ticket that he understood, like, okay, we lost to a bad team at home. Lost us to Sixers one time at home. And we lost him on a Tuesday and we ain't played a Saturday. And he gave us Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, meet at the arena for shoot around Saturday. And I never forget, you know, Wednesday and Thursday, we all was in the gym I working out. We was in the gym like, 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 like we, we were so mad at him because he knew that, you know what I'm saying, that we wanted to go at each other for losing that game. And that. he had the mind like, nah, nah, y'all think about it. So we played whoever we played the next game. I forgot who we played. I think we played the Nets. It was like, we beat him like, like, like 25 or 30. It was like, because he knew it. He just like, he came in and I think he went home. <laughs> I think he might have went home. He right. came back and like, hey, y'all ready to play some ball today? Let's see. 
the shoot around, you know, you remember the time we was in Philly, we had yeah. the shoot around and, mm -hmm. and you said, um, plan the sixes, <laughs> it's a crazy thing, God, we go get on the bus, leave the hotel, go to the arena, and Philly was in a re, uh, rebuild situation yeah, at that time. And we was got at, a holiday, all yeah, of them. There. We had half court, and you know, we always get in before we start shoot around. Yeah. And, you, and you said, um, man, what the fuck are we going over these guys? What, 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 what are we no, scouting P, these guys for? P-Shot, P-Shot. Yeah. Man, are you serious? We yeah. gotta come in here and go, and go with Philly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Doc was like, "Well, y'all got it. Y'all think y'all got it?" We was like, "Yeah, we got, we got it. it. All right, let's get let's, it. Let's, let's go." go home. I was like, "What?" That, I now see, see, I never seen that ever happen. Oh wow, I never saw that. That never happens. You know what I'm saying? But that kind of confidence he had in us that not because we know the disrespect of the, the, the Sixers. Six it just he, it, was, it was us. Yeah. It was all about us, and we did everything as a team, like. Everybody, you know what I'm saying? Every we had the, we had our, you know, y'all had y'all boo ray table. Right, man. You know, we had the baby boo ray table. Boo -ray, you know, right. I'm laying on the floor with the dice, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, so, you know what I'm saying? So it, it was all it was all about camaraderie, man. And I yeah. think that, you know, we just we just enjoyed each other as a as a unit and we won a championship that year. Because I think the way he coached us, he just coached us hard, you know. He took y'all the game sometimes. When when tight games and they they bullshit and like Sam get you guys ready come take them out the game, you know Atlanta remember the game Atlanta remember took all it took the all stars of the big three out you the game. You was like an assistant then yeah. on the yeah. low. Yeah. On exactly, the exactly. He was training me for that. Like walking back to the tunnel when I didn't play that much like my last year, he used to always say, um, "Come here, I need you to deliver this message to them yeah, guys." Yeah. You know, you're coming at guys. Look. We got to swing the ball. We got to do it. I remember that. And then I sit down and he'd come in and say the same exact thing he told me to say. And, you know, y'all knew it. I was getting information from him. So. Are you shocked that y'all still together? No. No, he's like a big brother to me, man. That's right. Um, he showed me a lot of hard love. Like, people don't think that we get into it. Man, Doc always get into the debates. Y'all yeah, two alphas. Yeah, we two but alphas. We have a lot of respect for each other. Yeah, we too. have a lot of respect for me. And I know for a fact he understood, he respect my. Things. Brain about the game of basketball, mm -hmm. you know, we we don't agree about a lot of things. Um, and it's okay, okay, you know, Doc. He don't like too many. He don't like no yes me man. You know what I'm saying? And if I have an opinion about something <laughs> and he thinks differently, you know, he, you can still have that opinion, Sam. But I feel this way. Right. But ultimately, he's the head coach. My job as assistant coach is to make his job easy as possible, right. give him all the information he needs. Um, to make the team successful. And sometimes I might have suggestions and, you know, he may not agree with. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, you know, bitch up on it, like, well, he don't he ain't pay me no mind, nah. You know, sometimes he does use my suggestions, you know? Get it. You know, but when it's come down to a player um, and he got to have a deep conversation with, I know for a fact I'll be in the office with him. And Doc, and I love Doc. Shout out to Doc Rivers, man, one of the best. Always. One of the best, man. If I was asking you, <clears throat> um, in your mind, I know we've always talked about head coaches. Mm -hmm. I know there's something that you want to be one day. Mm -hmm. um, in your mind, what's, what's, what's the, like the, I ain't gonna say the perfect, what's perfect, right? I think about that. But what's, what's the ideal situation when it comes to a whole head coaching job for yourself? Mm -hmm. In a, in a, I, I want to say in a, in a perfect, no, we ain't going to speak in a perfect world. In the ideal situation. I like Set that. It Set it up for us. Mister, a, a young team. Like a young rebuilding team. A young rebuilding team that, so I want to think I know how to get done. I know how to motivate. Creative owner. I know how to create no, an I mean, atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. I'm where, talking about, where, you, want, you want a creative owner that, yeah. that's, that's at, an atmosphere where they know we're going to have fun. Mm. We're going to play hard. Mm. We're going to enjoy this. Right, you got to enjoy it. I you know what I'm saying? You know, we can be prepared. You have to be prepared, you know? And, you know, I'm just a, you know, my, I'm a kind of guy, take it, you, you just can't, I've been in this game a long time. Right. I'm not, I don't know everything about the game, but I know a lot about the game. I have seen it. I've been on, I've been every player from one to 15 mm. on the basketball team. I've been, the number one guy, the number two guy, number three guy, four, five, to the 15th man, my last year in the NBA. Right. I didn't play one minute in my 16th year in the NBA, and I sat there every night and was the biggest cheerleader. I wasn't like ML Carl swinging the towel, but when y'all came out the game, right. I knew if y'all was, was right. bullcrapping, I'm like, hey, come on, man. Right. Come on. 
we down, come on, we up five against the Charlotte Hornets, or you know, just using Charlotte as an example back right. there. Come on, man, like, come on. Are we, are we playing for a championship? We don't supposed to be up five playing for a championship in April against the Charlotte Hornets, you know? So you saying? want some young players. I don't know. I'm looking forward to having some young players. I understand. I, I know. I see the development. You know what I'm saying? I can tell. I can look at the guys. Say, uh, he, mm, mm. maybe. Mm. Wow. Not if he make any shots. If he goes 0 for 10, I knew Bradley Bill's gonna be a great player. Saw it. I saw it because the high he was getting the shots off. Right. You know, most guys can't get their shots off. High he was, he was missing. He missed like 10 shots, right. but he got all of them off cleanly. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I just told him, listen, I don't care about making this. I want to see how easy you get your shots off. Would you ever coach college? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And that's why I feel, you know what's real talk? I really be feeling like a lot of these leagues, you know, I'm not going to go into all the different leagues there are, but, you know, the obvious ones like the G League. Um, but these leagues, I feel like um, not enough is stressed on the player development side. And that's what I love about you. You actually moved the needle into player development. Um, I know you're, I know you're a Seminole, you know, Florida State, mm -hmm. shout out to Florida State. Um, shout out to Charlie Ward, Bob Sir, Dale Davids, <laughs> Chucky Graham, you know what I'm saying? Talk about them days, dog. Oh, I man. come from ACC town, you know, G, uh, Greenville, uh, South Cac, Malden all day, right? Uh, you know, we was huge Clemson fans because we was upper state. Gamecocks was in the SEC. Talk about ACC, Florida State, the good old days. What was the experiences like for you? Man, like... As a youngster? I came out of... I was the junior college player of the year. A lot of people don't notice he's from Baltimore. From Baltimore. Be more, shout to be more. Right, right, right. Rayford, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mello, right? Right, right? You know what I'm saying? Who right. else from be more we don't know? Reggie Williams, Reggie, Reggie Williams? Lewis. Yeah, Reggie Lewis, oh, yeah, Muggsy Bogues. What am I thinking about? What my am I best thinking friend, about? Kirk Lee, you know what I'm saying? Kirk Lee! <laughs> yeah, hey! That's your man, eh? <laughs> that's your man, eh? Kirk, Kirk Lee. Lee, right. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, like, just Baltimore, it was like, we're small, we're a small city. Right. Very right. small city, You get city, to Florida. Man. And like, like, you know, people think Baltimore's not a big city. Like, I can actually walk from West Baltimore to East Baltimore. You mean, you mean walk? What'd walk. You mean? I can walk from West Baltimore, East Baltimore to West Baltimore. It'll take me about, about an hour and 15 minutes. Oh, okay, okay. Then okay. You, you can walk right through, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's that like, small. Like you ain't say. walking from Holly, Beverly Hills no to doubt. Compton. No doubt. No, no doubt. You, you ain't going to make it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. You know what I'm saying? But it was, so all our talent went to, most of the great talent from Baltimore went to Dunbar High School. Oh, really? Yeah, because we didn't have an NBA it. team. So that, you know, you as a kid, you know, Dunbar was it. Coach Barway, shout out to Mr. Wade. That was it. You know, we had, Dunbar had, the only high school in Baltimore at that time had like a shoe deal. We had a Nike contract. Y'all was, was universal. Yeah, because Mr. Wade used to run, he used to be the head director of the, the Nike, Nike All-American camp yeah, yeah. in Princeton. Right. He was the director. Like, like he, was the, he was the in charge of it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He dictated who came to the camp, who did. You know, he, it was his show. One of the biggest powerhouses in high school history oh, is yeah. Dunbar, right? Think about it. They had four guys off their high school team get drafted in the first round. Crazy. Three guys: Reggie Williams, Muggsy Bowes, Reggie Lewis, and David Wing game with the year before, right. second round, the first pick of the second round. So you got four guys. These four guys on one high school team. So you, so you leave that and go to Florida, which is totally different weather. Oh. And Florida State, Listen, it's, it's a football school, bro. I got that Florida State, man. I was like, and I'll never forget it. Pat Kennedy, our coach. And, uh, Pat you know, Kennedy. Ha <laughs> ha. He, he My shows God. you, like, you live it. And, and, and give a big shout out to Coach Don Zer. I mean, um, David Zimbal, Coach Z, right. and, and my main man, um, Kenny Eggman Williams. Black Eggman. Coach, Ed, the Eggman was, they took me to my apartment, and I was like, you know, I'm from Baltimore, you know. No, well, we ain't had no central agony this shit. You know, we had the right, agony right. this units in the, in, the, in the window. You know, yeah, that dripping water. water. <laughs> that dripping water. You know what I'm saying? Cut the damn door. You're coming in. You're doing right, what you want. Right, right, shut right. the damn door. You got all this stuff on the side <laughs> yeah, of the yeah. Yeah. Right. Grandma like, shut the damn door. Right. Try to, try to cool in the whole goddamn city. You know what I'm saying? Things like that, you know? But when I got to Florida State, my head, man, I had, this time, you know, I'm, I'm a little older right there. I'm a little old. Right. But I had, um. What's this, 89? Man, this I'm is joking, like 90, 91. 91. 
man, and I had a, we had a, man, my roommate, Chuck Graham, we had a big floor model TV. We had a big floor model. Chuck People Graham. don't know what that is. That's you a name. From I'm Augusta, Georgia, Graham. you know what I'm saying? Wow. So he had a big old floor model TV. Then we had a VCR on top. I was like, oh, I can hold me, uh, like, own bathroom and everything. It was, it, was so, it, was, it was so cool. Plus, we was moving to the ACC conference. Mm. I'm from Baltimore. That's ACC territory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I wanted to go to Georgetown, but Coach Big, big Jar, rest in peace. He went. He, he said, "Nah." I asked him like five years later. I said, "Coach, why you let me come to Georgetown?" And he flat out looked at me. He said, "Sam, so I ain't went the whole East Baltimore on my campus." <laughs> I said, "Damn!" I said, "Damn!" I dare she was gonna have me on the campus. DC and B more ain't that far from each other. Right? It's 40, 35, 40 minutes oh, apart. But nothing. I was gonna have a whole no, all my boys. Listen, I had I had some of my boys, is, you know, drove from Baltimore to Tallahassee, Florida with no license. What? No license. A lot of people don't know that Sam got his own street in B more. That's you know crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, so my down. boys was like, they I'm we come to see you. And, you know, no license driving from like, like that's like 12 hours. 12, 13, I'm just crazy. pushing, no license, pushing. Crazy. Oh, that was this. Yo, I smell, I gotta get down here. <laughs> we drove. <laughs> you know? So well, you got a bunch of, so it's safe to say you, you you got everybody in the apartment, basically. I mean, everything mean, deep. <laughs> deep. They going to class with me, they going to class with I me and everything. It. I love it. It was some good times, man. It's good times. Talk like, about the day to play with Dream, man. It's, it's, I, I played with Kim Lodge one, his MVP, yeah. You know, I think he made like seven, six million dollars. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was, he, he was like, he was the baddest player I've ever seen in my life. Like, man, because he, he did it. He, like, he was great offensively. He was more better defensively than he was offensively. You know what I'm saying? Like, dreams get mad at us, Kenny Smith for myself, if our man beat us off the dribble and we reach in the foul. Because he wants that block. Oh, he's coming. No matter where he's at on the basketball court, he's coming. Is Kevin Johnson the only person to dunk on him that you saw? Yeah, I think so. That like I saw. That clean. Yeah, that clean. I mean, yep, yep. And um, funny story, Kevin. You know, you know, at that time, Dream was a Muslim, so Dream didn't mean to, you know, calm down. He was just real calm. And I know, I never forget. Brian Maxwell said, told me, he said, "This was two years ago. I think KJ ever had a black eye." Because <laughs> Dream ain't played that back then. Right. You know what I'm saying? When he was younger, but, right? But Dream told him. So Kevin Johnson tried to send a poster of him dunking on Dream and had Dream sign it. And man, I never forget Dream told Kevin Johnson, don't you ever disrespect me again. Don't you ever disrespect me again. Point man, disrespect me again. Okay? And I think Kevin, KJ got the, he got the picture, you know? You ain't mess with Dream on that basketball court. Nah. Um, my favorite Dream story is uh, Dean Garrett is guarding Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dean, was in, Dean lived in Houston with us, fact, so fact, Dean, fact. Dean got a lot of that. I didn't even know this, dog, until after all this, right? I didn't know he was already nervous. I, I mean, we playing Dream, and I played Dream a couple times. We get to, we get <laughs> yeah. to the uh, playoffs, uh, playoffs yeah. and, you know, Dream. Uh, oh, man. Anyways. We down here chilling, we down here talking on our end. Yeah, mm -hmm. then you got him straight up, you good, right. then you good. Man. Right. <laughs> right. Listen, in the game, I don't know how he got this off. I don't know if he was on the run back or whatever, but it was a pause of the game. He took his mouthpiece out, they looked at him, and he looked right at him. He said, I didn't hit him with a lot of the movement. Right, right. Put his shit right back in and turned around. Right, right. I'm freezing him. I am freezing him. I am hitting him a lot of the movement. Right, right. I have never heard that type of quality shit talking. That was like a gentleman's shit talking. I am freezing him. I am hitting him a lot of the movement. And I was like, damn, I got to use that. And I never got a chance to really use it. I'm going to yeah. test his letter. Yeah. <laughs> that was really like the Michael Jordan of the post to me when it Man. came to the bag of, tr bag of everything. <laughs> He's like... Man, he's Rudy Gobert on steroids defensively because he can he can switch one through four. In time, he, 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 he you know he's top ten steals every year. You know top two, mm. three in block shots every year. Blocks. He was, oh, he was he was he was he was, he was good. Man, offensively, he was just, you know, if you played on one on one, it was like all you could do is hope that he miss. Like, like everybody asked me, how would he do in this on this time of basketball? I was like. Simple. He would destroy. 
No more double team the post. Right. Now if you get the, if you try to double team the post from now, you get there late. You know, he had every shot from the post. He can, you know, he can shoot the tournament jump shot. He had a great jump hook, a great jump hook. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you're smaller than him, he was going, he was jump hooking you to death. Right. He was jump hooking you to death. Didn't he was bigger he than was. you. But then he, he didn't have handles from baseline to baseline, but he had handles from top of the key to baseline. Mm. And it was always a cross. I was always a cross. I, I loved it. Always a cross. It was always sharp, too. It wasn't out here. It was all he, up in here. He was the best big man I've ever seen who can spin on the drop of a dime. Mm. Like, <laughs> you cut him off, you spin it, jump hook. You know what I'm saying? You know what's too, Sam? He probably the quickest uh, big I've ever seen to counter. Like, as you as, say, say, like, he got you, you know? Because sometimes, the, as soon as you come to the post, everybody thinks you're going to assess it, and then you mix it up, right? He just quick and go. Like, well, I've not been there, and I reacted, boom, and then he's back. And yeah, then. yeah. He's, he, he has the best second jump I've seen. Like, yeah, he, like, he jumped, like, and he he missed the rebound, and he came right back up there and could get it again. You know what I'm saying? So He working on that? Is he working on all the counters, or is it just coming to him like a... Man, the best... The, the, I just seen Dream do a lot of jump roping. <laughs> we some Houston. He just jump roping, the heavy jump rope. He just jump roping, and just jump roped, and just, you know... Never seen him play in the summertime. Never saw him work out. So back then, training camp was like a month. So he got he got in shape during training camp. But you know, just people always ask, how would he do against the Joker and Joel L and B? I was like, how would he do? Like, Dream is one. These guys can dream. Dream Joker is good and and Joel is good, but another level, another level of not just IQ but intelligence too, man. Um, Is it a guards league? Oh, strictly guards league. You is know. it? It's a guard. It's 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 small forward and down league. So yeah, anybody you can have, you can handle the ball and get your shot off. You know, because everybody switch one through five in the pick and roll. So you know, you got to be able to get the mid range, the three out the dribble. You know what I'm saying? Like Steph Curry, you know. You know, show me so much this year, man. I'm always been a fan because he has a unique ability that a lot of guys don't have. He shoots the basketball. That's an NBA skill. Mm. He shoots the basketball. He has a great handle. Kyrie may be the best finisher as a guard I see in a while, but Steph ain't bad either. Mm. He's right up there. He is. You know what I'm saying? Don't get a lot of credit for it either, Sam. No, he, he finishes in traffic a lot. Off left hand, hand, right hand. Off the glass, yeah. And, Man, and like, you know, it kind of comes off the circus, but. It took me a while. It took me a while to say, like, Isaiah Thomas, you know, Detroit Isaiah Thomas was like, it was always magic. It was like, but Isaiah, there was me for a while. It was like, man, ain't nobody better than Zeke. I don't give, I don't give a damn what they do. Right. But man, this step, the step carry this year, man, like. Yeah. It took another step. He's second now, man. It's my mm. opinion. He's second. He's second. Mm. He's second behind Magic as the point guard, man. He's 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 fat, damn good. Mm. He handles. He can pass it. Uh, he can shoot it. He can shoot the mid range shot. He got layups. He got floaters. You know, he's stronger now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can see it. I said, oh. Yeah. It's, I don't know how long he gonna play, but he, you know, he ain't chasing any records. He just, he just chasing championships, man. It looks like you gotta more than ever. You gotta have a one-on-one game. He, you know what I'm saying? As any player in this game, because gotta one have game, a one-on-one game. If you can't have a one-on-one game, you can't be on the floor. You can be on the floor. You gotta have a. If you can't shoot, you it's hard for you to be on the floor. Mm. If you can't shoot the ball, it's hard to be on the floor right now because the teams are. Collapsing. Collapsing and, and allow that guy who really can't shoot the ball to shoot the basketball. And let him be the first option, eh? Yeah, they just like, like, like you me taking this away. They just right. they just leave you and say, hey, make him shoot the ball. You know what I'm asking, man? Is it, are, there, are there still plays? Like, are y'all coming down uh, 13? Are y'all, are y'all still coming down? Because sometimes they're, I watch this, I, I, watch, I watch and, and it don't they're be all, They're all plays, but when teams switch everything, they switch one through five. Now it just comes a one-on-one game. So now you gotta have your best one-on-one players initiate. Yeah, initiate the offense. So, like I like watching uh, Luka Doncic play. Like I just, 
watching Luca is like wow, like, <laughs> like I'm watching a Monet, right? You sitting yeah, there and yeah, you're yeah, just yeah, yeah. observing it, right? He's good, man. Yeah, he's you can good. you can see, you know what I can see in him early. I can see the maturity in that he's played young. His his game. He's been a pro since he was 16. 14, 15, 14, 14 right. Years, Super you know young. Yeah, yeah. Pro, so I see it though. He's he slow. Seen, he just seen every defense. He just seen every day defense in Europe, man. So it's just it's just crazy. Just watch them play. And I remember two years ago we had Ben Simmons and um Luca. Ben Simmons, I think, does a great job of guarding Luca. He's tall. Yeah, he's tall. Just as big, fast. And he just and Ben's strong as a ox. Right. And and Ben had did a great job against him, and Luke still had 30 plus. Damn, word. 30 plus. 30 plus. We won the game, we won. It was an easy game for us to win, but you know, just the, the specials of, you know, Luke is special. Joel and Beat is, you know, that's my guy. He, he's special word. for a guy from to be seven foot one, like 300 plus, and moving like he moved, man. Like, word. like, he's crazy. Big. He's big like Shaq, but has an agility of a four. Yeah. Yeah, he he rules. He moves very well. Very well. I I, I hope I hope um, I hope that he wins the MVP this year. I think him and Luca, myself. Although I have a theory when it comes to Djokovic. Have we uh, have we ever had a player win the MVP three times in a row? Bird, right? Bird won it. Bird, three years right? Ago. Yep. Will you 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 think that in our lifetime we will ever see a player win the MVP three times in a row? I think our league is so full of different talent. Just think, last year, we didn't get to see Kawhi. We didn't mm -hmm. get to see Paul George. We didn't mm -hmm. get to see Zion. Mm -hmm. We didn't get to see John Wall. Mm -hmm. These guys coming back. Um, I'm just saying. I'm just talking about all the superstars that we did get to see last year that's going to have obviously be mm -hmm. a big emergency this year. Mm -hmm. Like Kawhi. I mean, can, can we see a time where a guy wins MVP three times? Or you think that we just got too I think, many times? I think it'd be too, I think it'd be tough. You know what I'm saying? I think, my, you know, maybe I'm biased. I'm a side coach, but Joe. Absolutely, absolutely. I think Joe was supposed to be the MVP last year. You know, the eye test, mm. you know. Russell, Will, and Bird are the three. Yeah, the eye test. You know, look at, you know, damn all the, the analytic stats and the eye test, you know. Mm. You know, Joker, you can't take nothing away from Joker, but no doubt. you know, you know, Joel and Beach, in my opinion, should have been the MVP. You know when I ask you, man, John Wall's back, man. Think he's gonna help the Clippers? Hell yeah. John Wall presents something to get the Clippers something they they never had. Speed. Mm. And under control though. Speed. He's a great passer. Um, you know, I know he missed two years, but He's still fast, man. He's right. still fast. He's, just, he's, he's still fast. He's the fastest guy that they have on that team. Right. And I think they're going to get easy baskets with him pushing the ball in the fourth quarter. And he will have a lot of breakaway layups because they have shooting all over the court. Um, is he a great shooter? He shoots the ball well enough. He shoots the ball well enough where he can make a shot, a big shot. He can have a pull-up jump shot. He can make a 15-foot jump shot. He can hit a three. Um, they can be. They can be. They can be good. They yeah. can be good. They got a lot of talent. They got a lot of players. They can be good. I'm rooting for them, man. I hope Jay. I hope Jay. Ty Lu. Shout out to Ty Lu. How important are um, the older player mentors to a lot of these young guys? I don't think we have a sound mentorship program built enough. Because I really think that if a lot of these guys could hear some of the knowledge or be able to gain some of the knowledge. I think they'll look at things a little different. How 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 essential as you think mentors are today, not just in basketball. Athletes, what, but to what you, you, you need mentors, man. Like yeah. think about it, we came a league. We had guys who had families. Yeah, older guys. They had families, three or four kids. You know, one of my teammates I had in New Jersey Nets was Michael Cage. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Rebounding fool, that boy. Oh, that my, my, my God. You know what I'm saying? It's just like just so professional to a T, like. You know, never was on, never was late. You know what I'm saying? Just look at me like, come on, man. He he used to be so amazed at me because, you know, I wasn't a big time, I wasn't a big time practice player. Mm. And, and when the game start, he was like, man, you're a totally different person. Popcorn, popcorn. He said, he said, he said, he said, you're a totally different player when, when the game start. I said, man, I just that practice stuff ain't for me, man. Like, I can do it, you know, but. But then he told me one day, he said, the practice ain't really for you, Sam, it's for the team. Mm. We know what you're going to be doing. I know how you're going to be carried during the game at 7, 7.30.
put, you know, we got to get Kendall and Kyrie Kittles and you know, we got to get them up to par right. on your level. And he did, you know what I'm saying? I, and I didn't want to do it, but you know, when I got to Minnesota, it was really my first time really, really practicing. Locking in. Every day, because flipping, the times I wanted to get out of it, flip used to come, just to come, come on, Sam, come on. Take your flip flops off, <laughs> put your tape on, let's go. We heard about the Milwaukee days where you used to sit there in the robe and read the paper during yeah, walkthrough. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. It was crazy. Now I'm a coach. I hope, no, hope none of my players do me like that. Right. Like you, you know it's coming back, yeah, right? You, so know, you can't even sure. front. You for already sure. know karma a bitch. It's going to come sure. back around. For sure. Probably be, probably be Ace or one of my sons yeah, right, or something right, right, playing right. for Sam. Right, right. right, right. Yeah, my dad said, you ain't, you ain't do shoot around, so I ain't doing shoot around. Right. But George Carl was the coach then. George Carl was a little say, different. Man, talk George, about all your coaches. George, 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 George was a little different, man. George was like, you know. He was like he, Rudy? In a way? What do you mean? He was like Rudy, but George used to challenge you more than Rudy. George would say something like, like, I said, George, when you want it, man? Listen, listen. Such a man GP got on the team. I said, when you want it? And, and George would look you right in the face with no hesitation. I want it at 7 o'clock. Oh, word. I want it at 7 o'clock. So I used to get my shots up before shoot around, before the team came on the court. Then when the team started shooting, having the team shooting, I just sit there on the sideline, just watch them shoot. I've been in a, a deep sweat. Mm. And he used to say, well, I don't worry about it. He, 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 he hated me from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Not hate me, he just didn't like me as a ball player from 10 o'clock. I didn't do shit, you know? I didn't do, I didn't do too much. Less got my more. shots up. I got my shots up, I was ready for the game, but at seven o'clock, he always said, I ain't worried about saying because this is what he loves to do. He loves to compete, to play at seven o'clock. He right. loves it. So you know, once we got, you know, on the same <laughs> page and everything, and he challenged me a lot now. He challenged me a lot. You know, we went through some but him went through some battles, but you know, he's one of the coaches that I, I really, really respect. You know? Sure. you know, he's one of the first coaches today. Okay, you go. Besides Calipari. Calipari just let me do whatever. Right. He, you know, we, we, we made it, we made it to the playoff, played the Bulls the first round, you know what I'm saying? And it, and we lost, we, we got swept, but uh, but just for us to get there was something big for New Jersey Nets at that time. Really? I made it fun for people to come and want to play in New Jersey. No doubt. Steph came, you know what I'm saying? The J Kid came after that, you know? Like I went to the Clippers. I wanted to play for the Clippers. Right. So I got there and I took me to the second round and and now it came, okay, man, it's Clippers ain't bad. Mm -hmm. No one never wanted to go play with the Clippers. Word. Talk about the threesomes you played you, you play with. You've been in Milwaukee with a fucking, probably one of the dopest, you, Big Dog, and yeah. Ray Allen. Big and, Dog, man. Um, uh, although I actually love the 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 Maxwell, Kenny the Jet, and yeah. yourself. That was more of my favorite. I used to love when y'all was in yeah. that small ball and four mm -hmm. in with yeah. the Dream. With Robert O at the four. I used to love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then you came to Soda with Spree and I, man. If um, if I had to ask you your your perfect threesome to play in the game of basketball that you could put with yourself, who would else? It would be, who would be the perfect hand? That I play with? No, 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 no. Just do it. Because you play with some great other guys. And I'm telling you, Milwaukee's, I used to love to watch you, Ray and Dog. Name or give me I'll put, in I'll your put perfect like that. I make it simple like perfect this. Perfect world. I put it like world. this. Give me your favorite or your yeah. perfect whatever. When I got traded from New Jersey to Milwaukee, I got a great career in Milwaukee. But if I got traded to New Jersey from New Jersey to Minnesota with you back then, man, I'd have been a Hall of Fame basketball player mm. easily. Word. I know we never. The thing we struggled with Milwaukee, we never had a a big that can flat out do it. It was all. Ray, Big Dog, and myself getting it done, you know? Mm. So, and then you was the post presence there. Yeah, I, 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 was the man, I was the really the guy that George Carl ran plays to down stretch. The George post double play. team? Yeah, the George double team. And the small guy, I'll never forget, we was playing the Golden State Warriors with George Carl. And my homeboy, Muxy Bowles, was guarding me. And I kept, and George, and George kept giving me the ball on the post. I was like one for five on the post. And it's a timeout third quarter. George walked over to me and said, hey, listen here. If you're going to win this damn game for us, or you're going to lose it for us. This could be on you. That's what's up. I can't get a better shot with you over five foot three guy. I can't draw a better play. I, and I was listening, and we had Ray and Big Dog on the team who was scoring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll never forget the Big Dog came to me with his, his quiet voice, little squeaky voice. 
Oh, come on now. Come on now. No, that's your homeboy now. You got me a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Big Dog. Big shout out to Big Dog. My dog. Big Dog. You got to make a couple now. And wait, yeah. but George kept going to me and he's like, well, you fading, you know, you, you missing shots from Muggsy, but you fading away and he's not even jumping. He sounds like you. Yeah, That's yeah. some shit you're yeah, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing? Like, now it made sense. I made like four in a row and we won a game and everything. Mm. And I'll never forget it. We got locked on the George. Like, if you fuck this game up, I'm going to let you have it in the media. Oh, wow. I was like, you, you do it anyway. You, you're still going to do it, so it don't matter. Right. So, But we had that great relationship that he didn't take nothing personal what I said about him, and I didn't take nothing personal what he said about me. So that's how it was. So then we got Gary Payton. It was like, mm. you know, I remember we got Gary Payton in Milwaukee. We traded Ray Allen, and we had um, Tim Gergmich. He was one of the assistant coaches. <laughs> Senior GP. Ger. Ger. And he told, he walked the next time you, I got Sam Cassell, and they gonna give me Gary Payton again. Georgie, try, Georgie, you fucking trying to kill me? <laughs> Shout the girl, one of the Shout best to do it, right? Oh, my man, good man, my man. Like, like my pregame workout before the game, Gerg would be like, go get Sam, man. Yes, in a barber in the locker room, get me. So I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna shoot you before the game. You know, some of your stuff, you know, I ain't gonna shoot you before the game. And Gerg would come in there, so wet. Come on, kid. We gotta get some shots up. <laughs> you know, I gotta go out there. Yeah, old you know? school. I go out there with my shoes on, no socks on, just get like 20 shots up for them. I never shot before the game. All your no. players out there that went out there and actually nah. played shot before the game. Uh, if anybody seen me warm up, you know, my warm up was like how I wanted to start the game. I didn't want to yep. use no energy before the game. I stopped shooting probably like my, after my like six years. Mm -hmm. You know, I had an, enough notoriety. That I was getting so much of shots up before the game and in a super sweat that I was like, nah. Yeah, you got an assessor for the go game. Go out here, get some shots up, get sweaty, and then come back and like, nah. Nah. Rhythm everything. These kids now, I see they do a whole station. You got three, four warm ups. Like, uh, if, like the layup line don't even look like the layup line no more. It looks like yeah. half training cap, half. Like, what's going on? Like, is, is that the new wave of how we warm up now? You should be just bearing working, you, you know what I'm saying? I just, just don't ever mistake activity for achievement. You know what I'm saying? I just a lot of activity out there, guys mm. doing their own thing. I just, you know, I just, I don't care what they do as a coach. As long as you be ready to play the game of basketball. Right. I, that's my whole thing. You know, everybody has their own way to warm up and prepare for a game, like you always say, you know. I don't want to hear like Tony Allen. I don't want to hear Gucci man blasting <laughs> in the locker room for the game. <laughs> but Tony Allen needed to hear Gucci Man before the game. Tony you know what I'm saying? Definitely needed Gucci Man. Shout, Shout out to TA. You know, Tony Allen, you know. Shout to Gucci. Like, Gucci. I never seen one guy play one artist every day. If Gucci Man, you ever see this man, you ever see Tony Allen, man, give him a hug, Straight man. Straight up. Because he's your biggest fan, fan like, ever. Like, we didn't know who Gucci was. Man, you know, we, we was we, all Jeezy fans. Yeah. So, you know, we, we obviously knew who Gucci was, but man, T.A. got Gucci on in breakfast. Every day. In the he shower, he got Gucci on. He got Gucci on. He get out, he put lotion on Gucci. He saying, what's up? I holla at y'all later, Gucci. Right. Hop in the whip, it's Gucci. Get home, eat, watch some movies, Gucci. I'm like, God damn, I killer. Asked, I remember I asked him one day, I said, <laughs> We in Vegas. I said, if Gucci, I said, if Jay Z pull up in the limousine. No, you said Gucci. If Gucci said, pull up yeah, right yeah, now, yeah. what you gonna do, T.A.? Oh, I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah, I ain't gonna say nothing. So one day I asked him, I said, we out. We in Vegas. And Jay Z got a limo. That's how old this was. We talking oh, about yeah. limos. I said, Jay Z pull up the limo. And he said, come on, man, y'all going with me? And Gucci pull up the limo. I said, who you going with, T.A.? Yeah. And Jay-Z was hotter than Gucci. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Jay-Z was Sweet. large at the time. This is when Gucci first started Gucci off, too. first started off. Had a bunch of mixtapes out and, and stuff. And Tony Allen said, man, I'm going with Gucci, man. <laughs> going, man, you know what it is, man. I'm going with Gucci, man. man. I don't hear that, man. I'm serious. I'm going with Gucci. And I said, really? He said, I'm going with Gucci, man. I just love that man, man. T.A. T.A. Let me ask you this, bro. It did, um, I'm watching the moves, man. You watching the, the, the packages, man? The moves and everything? Yeah. They got, they're these, these guys can play, man. These, these guys. These no, we couldn't play. We couldn't play in the Sarah Lord. I'm watching. I'm, I'm watching. I'm watching Steph Curry in the. In the I'm watching Steph Curry in the pick and roll, in and out, mm -hmm. behind the back, reject. Yeah. He behind the back reject. Yeah. Right. Wicked. Wicked. Man, listen. Twin list. Listen. Tim. Tim. Tim Hardaway crossover. Uh. Uh. Mm -hmm. Then give you the. 
the, the reject. Yeah. The, the fans don't even understand this. So fans, when I'm in the pick and roll and say that the pick and roll is, is, is designed for me to go this way and I and I cut it and I go the opposite way, that's what we call a reject. When you do a reject, you're supposed to face the face the pick and roll and actually cross it over. Now you still got your man on the hip, so you gotta figure that whole thing out, right? So when you reject, he right here. So now when you reject, you're on the other side of the pick, the big's not there, and then you can go and actually shoot, because you're on the left hand now, stop and usually shoot a a, a, a mid-range, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I saw him, Tim Hardaway, train the leg cross, yeah. reject behind the back. This is like a fucking unbelievable move. Yeah. Gets to the left that he wants to, and then triple, not double, not one yeah. single, triple step back for a tray ball. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. none of us had none of that shit. Bro. No. None of us. No. No. And the shit that we would probably slap a kid for working on, and, and we're like, on. what the hell are you working on? And, working and in that situation, it's it working works. Out. It's working now. So man. that's when you have to get the hell out the way and let actually the game progress, right? Hey, I tell people, the, the, the difference between out we play now, you know, it's just maybe two or three guys may have freedom. These guys got all oh, got freedom. They got freedom to ball. Because I see the eighth guy come down. And yeah, just kinda, yeah, it's just it's just how it is. I, I love watching. Just love my favorite part of just coaching, just sitting on the bench and just. Watching the game, man. I got the best seat in the house. Man. I see you every night, you sit just like that. Just like this. I sit I there. See, I see if you're going to change it sometimes. I'm going to see if he cross, cross his fucking leg. I just sit here, just sit here, just like. This motherfucker going to start the game crossing his leg. First of all, I'm going to. You watch it right here, bro. Yeah. And church will tell you. Yeah. I'm going to see if this moment. Look, look, watch how I say I'm getting the game. I see you. Uh, yeah. uh, My back was all messed up. I had back surgery uh, last year, like, man. man this nigga you like remember? Ah! <laughs> 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 I had back surgery, man, but I. No, we're I, back, I, baby Mortimer, we're I, back. I, I, I just, you know, as a player, man, I had a bad back. And I, I took, I had about, I had about, about 15 quarter zone shots. Let me ask you this. Career. Knowing all that, would you, would you have actually done load management? Fuck no. Period. That's certified. I love to play, man. Facts. Compete. Facts. I ain't want to. I had so many. I like like Nick Manek is one of my biggest friends in in basketball. I'm a real close guy. And if I got a chance to play against Nick, and I don't care what's going on with me, I'm gonna play against. Cause I know it. Cause in the summertime, we live all up in Houston, right. and the bragging rights, man. You know what I'm saying? You know the bragging rights, man. We summertime kicked. Summertime chat. You know what I'm yeah. So I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I ain't want to hear that. I did not want to hear that. So, you know, you know the low management. Yeah. I think I play at least seven, seven three, seven four games a year. You know? I just like to play. I just like to play. I just like, once you get on the court, you know, you start competing and everything. We'll see what happens, you know? Think about the time we was in Minnesota. We first got there and we was like, like 11 and 7. 11 and 11. 11 and 11. And Flip mm-hmm. said, and Flip Porter's me, you and Spree. Guys. Yeah. And remember that? Guys. Come here, guys. You know what, I'm <laughs> what are you doing? Like, because we was trying, I was trying to stay out your way. You was trying to stay out my way. You was trying to stay out Spree's way. And Flip's like, nah, if Sam take a bad shot, both of y'all should say something to him. The we wasn't day. doing it for 22 the, days. The very next day. Yeah, we just had, you know, the very next day. Hey, come on, Sam. What that, you doing, man? I think this is my shot. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, right. Right. And, and we became a better team. We won like 16 straight games. I remember that. You know what I'm saying? And we was number one seed in the Western Conference, you know? What's next for you, man? What's the vision, man? Man, take it, man. I'm just, I'm enjoying life, man. I'm, you know, hopefully I get one of these head coaching jobs one, one time, man. Well. If not, you know, I'm get me a college job, man. I know I'm a teacher. Mm. Everybody underneath me gonna get better. Come get me when you get an NBA job. That college shit. Uh... You gotta stay in the same town every year. Every what? Day. what, what? <laughs> <laughs> Unless you go to UCLA. Yeah, right, right. USC. Yeah, hey. So USC, y'all hear that? I come come down, on down. Yeah, yeah. Don't go they join like this is some shit. Yeah. My great recruiter. Hey. You know? I've been all the kids want to be in the pros. Why not learn from me? I can get you in the pros. Now, you got to do your own job to stay in the pros now. Right. I can get you there. I can get you in the pros. Absolutely. Get you in the pros. You know, you, you got to do your own job to stay in the pros. That's the hard part. That's the Guys best. don't realize, you know, getting in the pros is difficult. No. Staying, is, staying in the pros is a motherfucker. Consistency. Consistency. It's tough. Showtime got a joint. I don't know if you even know yeah, mm-hmm. You saw it? Yeah, I saw some. Showtime got the joint called um, Point Guards. And... You know, New York always gets the credit for the dopest point guards. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Chicago, New, uh, LA, I know Houston, I know a lot of, even the A, even the ATL, I know a lot of cats that be mm-hmm. feeling a certain type of way. 
Have you seen it? Yeah, I, I've seen some of it. New York had a, they you know, they, New York had the guards like New York they, used they, to go. Yeah, they, 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 they could handle the, the ball. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know. Um, but the, to me, I was gonna ask you, what do you remember about New York point guard? Man, like, like, like. And who's your favorite New York point guard? Ross Strickland. Ross Strickland is my favorite that I had actually played against and watched, mm. but I was a big fan growing up. So I'm an ACC, been a football, my ACC, Big East. Nice. That, that goddamn Pearl Wash. Ooh. Yeah, he kind of left hand down, and, and he's the dude that gets Georgetown. I just, I, just, I never forget, I, I, I slammed the glass down at my grandmama's house and broke that joint. And my grandma would say, You're you a got, huge Hoyer fan? Huh? You was a huge Hoyer fan back then? What? Georgetown was everything. <laughs> what? Every day was Georgetown. So Pearl, wa- so Pearl. Pearl was, man, Pearl was just, you know, Pearl was so crazy with left hand, just right hand, just stay with, stay driven the thing with left hand. And that, and that dome, Pearl. But, but my favorite guard just to watch was in college was Kenny Anderson, man. Man, Kenny Anderson had the best, I think, I tell people all the time, he had the best behind the back dribble I've ever seen besides Steve Coulter, man. And he, that thing be on the yo-yo. And, Mr. Cheers be handling that thing. He's handling that thing like at will. You know, you got Mark Jackson, you got Kenny Smith. You got Kenny was the first New York point guard that actually can shoot the basketball. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he Mark. shot it kind of a weird little. Then you he shot it. it off his kind of. It looked like the park shot, didn't it? It looked like the. <laughs> looked like the above the rim joint. Yeah. So it's so many of them. Yeah, it is. You got Arnold Bernard. You got. Man, you got the A train. You got man, you got so many New York City point guards that was good. You got Skip the Malou, who's my rookie in um, yeah, and my rookie in Milwaukee. Yeah, Skip was pretty good. Um, Steph, you got Sebastian. Sebastian. You don't get. You don't hear about. You don't hear about the little street niggas like Booger. You don't hear about Sham. You don't hear. You don't hear about. You don't hear about Sham. some of them geniuses that. Sham guy was probably one. You know, he and Steph, yo, with this kid that was in Jersey named Shaheem Holloway. Who was really good too? That Ashley had. Yeah. He was nice too, Hell man. Yeah. And Felipe to be a shooting guard too. Felipe had handles. He ain't have it like, like when I first seen Ross Strickland. You know, Ross Strickland was a different type of. Um, he was a different download. Like, like I was watching him and just he, he was he, he was he, twirling he, and Strick, just. Strick was a guy I could never get at. You could never good. figure him out. I could huh? never like like man. I, listen, listen. I figured him out when he got little. He played with y'all in Minnesota. Yeah, he was a little older than. Yeah, he had a growing yeah, problem and I, though. And I got all. I got. I was taking that creatine. I was putting that muscle <laughs> on and everything. Strick said, "Look how big you done got, boy." I always been frail, and then, and I just, I was like, "This ain't fair." All the times he didn't got me, you know what I'm saying? Right. I said, "I got to get him when he, right. you know." But for all the time, take over all of us. But um, it was good, man. It was good. Rod's, you know, and I made the All Star team in '04, and I dedicated the All Star. Appearance to guys who didn't know make it like Ross Strickland and Dark Harper, man, with yeah. two guys I respect playing against D Harper in the, in the NBA Finals my rookie year, man. I was like, wow, man. It was like it was, it was a tug of war. It was that wasn't basketball then, you know what I'm saying? It was just right. like it was, just a, it, was a, it was a tassel, a tough getting the ball up the court. It was just the whole thing was just tough, man. Just playing against him, he was tough. D Harp was tough. Kenny Anderson was probably my favorite New York guard. I was a huge, uh, I don't know, man. When I was younger, man, I was infatuated with uh, my left hand. You know how, you know everybody saying, man, using your left hand, you got to work with your left hand, your left hand, and your left hand. uh, What's your left hand look like? It's a fucking hit that shit. Like, gain weight and work on your left hand. (laughs) (laughs) So when Kenny Anderson used to come through, yo, when he, remember that movie he did against Bobby Hurley? Man, listen, that's going to be the all time. Listen, it was just, listen, he was, so when I would get up in the morning, it's five in the morning. I used to live on this long ass street called Basswood. I had moved. I had just picked up basketball. And I used to wake up the whole neighborhood by coming in. And the whole time, this big long street, I would keep my head up. When I first started, I had to look at it. By like two, three weeks into it, this old cat used to come on the front, front porch and smoke a Newport in the morning, <laughs> West. And he used to always, he loved Derek Coleman. Pick your head up. <laughs> Cold and see the flow. Here, here you gonna see. You can't see the flow with your head down. Right, right, right. So every morning, me and West little ritual yeah, would be yeah. that, and I got good at it. Yeah. Ooh. Smoking that cigarette, Newport. 
Oh, wait, yeah, I see you got your head up this morning. Okay, you got your head up. You know what I'm saying? Keep your head exactly, up, young fella. Exactly. And I used to do the whole joint like that. Man, I got to the park, and the first time I did that, dog, you couldn't tell me shit. And I heard the crowd, ooh, big fella, ooh. <laughs> Big fella. And, and that's all I that's all I needed. But Kenny Anderson was my yeah, Kenny, yeah, he, he was my inspiration, serious. man. He was um he was electrifying. And then at that time he brought a different flair to the yeah. point guard position, you know? We were Reebok, uh, Reebok sneaker company. Oh yeah. And our mothers did this little commercial and everything. And him and my mother met and they was talking and everything. And I was like, my, that's my arch rival right there. Like, like, I got to get him. I got to get at him. How much older is Kenny and all these guys from you? They know. No, we the same age. Older, they're older than you? I, might, I think I might be one year older than You know what I'm saying? So when Kenny... So, so Kenny, no, Kenny only played one year in college. I know. You know. He came out. He came out as a freshman. Right, right, right. As a right, freshman right. year, he came out. He, he younger than you, Sam? They're younger than me. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm all 52. Right. Kenny, I think Kenny may be 51. When you see all the old guys... Love Sam. You know, it's nothing but love with me, man. I, if... You don't know me, you know. If you know me, you you, know, you would never say you don't like me. Fire. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. You know what I'm saying? But you know, guys who don't know me, they can say that. I don't give a damn about that. But guys that know me, gonna love me. If you had out of your whole career to say you had an arch nemesis that every time y'all met up, this is what it was, who would that be? Hmm. It's just me and Nick's around next. So we 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 were so close because we both came out of junior college. Y'all best friends too. Yeah, we, we, a lot of people don't know man, that. We was cool. We were real good friends. I ain't got to talk to Nick. Shout to Nick Van Next. Months, man. And when we talk to each other, it's like we was on the same grind in junior college. And and when we used to get together and play against each other, I mean, one year he's playing in Denver, man. He 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 put it on me in Denver. He put it on. Me. He had like forty, and we won a game. Mm. We had like twenty points, and we won a game. And he he walked off the court. He looked at me, holla, damn. I say, you have 40 on me, but we won. So you get back to Houston, you know what you know what's going on in the gym. <laughs> you know, you know what's going on. That's how it was. So every time we played against each other, we always try to go at each other. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just just friendly competition, man. Just two friends competing against each other. And and Nick the quick boy, you know, Nick at night with the Lakers boy, Tough, and I was coming off the bench with the Rockets. So mm. by the time I came in the game, he 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 ready. He be like, "Come on, Keller," you know what I'm saying? I gotta get ready. I say, "Dream." I said, I'm forced me to. I'm forced me to you, big fella. I need you to block it, you know. Dream, you know, block it, man. You know, Dream just Dream was good with that, you know, helping me out, helping right. everybody out, you right, know. Right, right. So I was. Oh, Nick the Quick. Shout to Nick Van Exel, man. Next season is 15 years, bro. Since we won it in Boston, since. You know, I think the last time you touched the floor too, right? Yeah, last yeah. time I touched the floor right, was a junior floor one. And um, yeah, and I, and I did the Hall of Fame. Uh, uh, what's your remembrance of that? I don't know, just recall it, just recall it, the 15 years, you know what I'm saying? Man. Did you, but what a lot of people don't know is Sam's like, I have probably three, four people that I call friends. Uh, he's one of them. Coach to my house, probably got keys to my crib. I know no you got codes. a couple keys in my cars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, Sam is one of them rare people that, you know, has been a friend uh, from A to Z. And, uh, yeah, that's it's, real talk. It, it, it's so special, Ticket. And we just walking through the hallway in Boston. I see Bill Russell. And Bill Russell grabbed me. He's always called me old man. <laughs> no, old man. You, you got your number one, huh? And he grabbed me and said, Sam, well, you winning the championship in this city. You will always be a Celtic. Oh, wow. He told me that. He said, you will always be a Celtic. You win the championship with the Celtics, you will always be a Celtic. You feel it when you go back? Hell yeah. Every, every time, it's just the PR department, a twist, a little twist in there, man. When I come to Boston, that's been 15 years. And I was coached with the Wizards my first year out of the league. And I come to Boston, twist coming to me, Jeff, twist coming to me with an envelope, four tickets. Every time I come to Boston. Whether you need them or not. You need them or not. I got an envelope with four tickets every time I come to Boston. Don't even have to ask. When I walk through the hallway, Twist come up the hallway, him and nah, his son. Hey, son. Just in case. True roar. Just man. in case. That's, 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 you know, small things like that, man. How you treat people. I, you know, I treated, I was cool with Twist. I was cool with everybody in Boston, you know? Everybody. But it's, it's special, man. You know? 15 years go by so fast. 
Right. Think That's about right. where we were 15 years ago, what we were doing, who we was with, the shit we was doing, who we was doing it with. I was in tip top shape 15 years ago. Ooh, I had the NBA body that couldn't play. <laughs> One of my favorite Sam stories that I'm gonna share with everybody or that I can share, because we got like a thousand stories that probably blow everybody's mind in here, right? <laughs> right. But one of my favorite stories is that, um, yeah, I'll I, 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 yeah, I, I say this now, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't tripping on him or nothing, but um, we was on a, um, I got invited to uh, Barry Bonds' house. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> Barry Bonds, shout out to B Bonds. Right. And um, he, he I, I don't, uh, yeah, he's either, yeah, he's just had knee surgery and he had like a dope year or something, right? But he got this new crib, it's super dope, we're in there. I think it was 4th of July or something, what was it? Something crazy, but we over here, right? We got invited. And uh, I remember he had this dope ass fucking white open court that looked like it could have been a tennis court, but it was like a, a, a basketball court. He had the whole gorilla in there and shit. And me and Sam in like some fly shit. We fly, we over here, you know? Sam in like all white, no <laughs> socks, all, you know what I'm saying? That's and crazy. we saw the court. He had some, he had the real NBA rock out there. I remember you, ha. Shot, you know, <laughs> and next thing you know, we got like a little shoot around going. He shoot, make two, throw crazy. it back to me. Next thing you know, he like, and he was like, what do we do? We play pig? We play it's pig, like pig first. first. He beat me in the pig. And then he was like, he said something. He said, oh, Slip. oh sir, what, what's up then? And this nigga don't ever go on defense first. So he always check. He get the ball. So I'm like, why you get the ball first? Let's shoot for the ball. We shot for the ball. I get the ball first. And <laughs> it turned into fucking, it turned into mayhem. If, if people was watching, like, no, nah, oh, we start off just me. You won the first game. <laughs> when you won the first, what was seven, five, seven, some shit. Five, we was there like, nah, no, we don't want to get sweaty on some like chills, yeah. man. Shit, that shit went out the door. He beat the first game, right? That's we crazy. won the first game. In the middle of the fucking second game, we noticed that people not came outside. People came outside just watching us play just watching one on us one. Play. We in here sweating we like sweating hard as hell. Our little outfits all sweated out. Now it's a party. He having a party there. So we sit there after the party with with, with paper towels. Watch out, looking nasty, <laughs> stinking. Sorry, boss. Like damn, I need to get some of this. They like, bring your ass over no, here. No, I ain't say that. I was just on some like nah, you know. <laughs> NBA shit, man. It ain't no bad. It ain't no MLB shit. You know, it ain't no baseball shit. He's like, right. what? I don't know what you mean? I get out here because he was watching. Yeah. So he was, so they yelled, like, Sam, take this. And yeah. you know, now the commentary, I win the second game, bam. So I'm like, like basically shut the fuck okay. up. Right. Like everybody <laughs> shut the fuck up. So I was like, I, I, I don't know how I said it, but you know, I was like, yeah. I, I said something real shit, like, mm. yeah, woo woo. And next thing I know, bro came out there and checked it up. I'll and that. I saw his leg. I was like, man, I ain't playing. Man, right. And listen, when I say Barry Bonds strong as an ox, so show, the ox, man, he, I checked him, but you know his, his leg was right. I was like, man, I ain't playing. I even said that. I ain't playing him. His leg right here, whatever. Big He's shot, like, no, no, no. I want, I, I want some of this. And he shoved the ball in my chest. I looked at Sam. He's like, man, go ahead. So he Sam backed up. I'm like, oh shit. When I say he chucked me, you know, chuck is when you go to put your elbow on somebody and you guard them. So I turned to the side like this. When he chucked me, yo, he. I thought he broke my whole, I thought he broke my whole ribs, yo. <laughs> I thought the nigga broke my ribs. I looked, I was like, God damn. Right. right. Uh, he didn't score. I beat him 7-0. It was not the best. Uh, kids right. crying. Right. Like, I right. kicked the ball in Martin Lawrence. Like, it was a, what turned out, what turned out to be like a, like a dope little time. Oh. Good day. We get in the car. Oh boy, you did what you supposed to do. Fuck that shit. Right, right. Bust his ass. Get your ass. Bust his ass. Get his ass. <laughs> it's like, right. yo, I'm up here right. feeling bad. I was like, damn, y'all fucked up the barbecue. We all sweaty and shit. Oh boy, fuck right. that shit. Right. You bust his ass. Bust him up. Go sign my wall for me, man. Come on. Right. Gary Trey. I got started for me. Ah, no word. Make it big, right. No word. Right. Hey, my dog. No, boy. You already know what it is, my nigga. Oh, wait. Let's say I'm here. We got the vanilla, we got the apple up here. Let me try the apple. The mm -hmm. I got right. you. That crown apple, you know what I'm saying? Hit the top, right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna toast to gratitude. When you think of gratitude, what comes to mind? Friendship, man. Friendship. Longevity. Right. 
Consistency. Yeah, okay. Consistency. Loyalty. Oh, man. My dog. Cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. Oh, God. All day. Mmm. That's a tap. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Ain't bad. That's right. That's let me, right. Let me take this with you. <laughs> <laughs> dog. To the good life. Cheers, brother. Gratitude. Always. My dog. Hey, that's it. Hey, I'm gonna have to have, man. Listen, that's smooth. That's real smooth, smooth. I felt like Crown Boy stepping that game up and shit. <laughs> you ain't gotta take that Crown Boy in my office. Crown, there. my dogs, right? That that was super smooth right there. We're home now, Ellie. We have to be more careful. What if this is all I'll ever be? That's not who you are! What was I supposed to do?